Hi guys, it's time for how to protect yourself from nuclear radiation and nuclear fallout. As we research how we need to act in the event of a radioactive tsunami. Well, when I was a little boy, many moons ago, they would tell us that the alarm would ring three times. Bing, bing, bing. You were supposed to grab your partner, go into the classroom, put your head underneath the desk and your hands on top of your desk. And that would be enough to protect you from a nuclear bomb. Yeah, we believed them. But then fallout would have killed us. Well, now that I look back, I go, really? Roger. That's why the government would be like uh, 50, 60 feet underground in a bunker with uh, particulated filters to make sure they were okay and we all perished and burned alive or went blind but seen the flash. Well, I've said this before and I'll say it again. It takes 50 pounds of plutonium in our atmosphere, 50 lousy pounds to pollute the entire planet. In the event of a nuclear attack it's best to stay on the ground floor of your house for at least 12 to 24 hours brings a whole new meaning to the words great balls of fire but if you're in the have a basement the basement is even better than your ground floor the lower down the better the thicker the walls the better and stuff well, even if you hide in your basement, all you're going to end up happening is going to be buried in it. Oops. Also, the event of a nuclear bomb had went off in the ocean, it would uh, engulf us all with water and we would die with a tsunami. So underground would not be a good option for that one. Ah, tsunami. First hits the tsunamis and about an hour later hits the tsundadis. And then we are... Sudetis, yeah, yeah, Sudetis. That's. I was trying to think of one word to say to that, but yeah, Sudetis. Yeah. I'm sorry, I'm being facetious. Sumami, Sudetti. Yeah, I like the way you go with that one. <laughs> it's 133. Temperature is 80 degrees. San Antonio, Texas. Very cloudy. We have a tornado alert north of here, and I'm me like an idiot. I happen to be on the north of the city. Ah, shit. Well, it's 11 degrees Celsius. Uh, current time is 33 minutes past seven, and I'm in Dundee, Scotland. Well, at least you're not in India, where the temperature is uh, 120 degrees. No, that's like a nuclear blast to us up here in Scotland. We are used to about 20, no, 19, 90 degrees Celsius, and that's too hot for us. We've been having a bunch of Ukrainians come on the Mexican border. It's not very pretty, really, and it's not a joke. Um, the Ukrainians that have been showing up in Texas are all sunburned. Their babies and their children's eyes are sunburned on their faces. Yeah, Roger, they're, just, they're the same as us. They're just going into springtime, aren't they? They just come out of winter. Right, it's a shame what's going on across there. Ah, rats. I miss my exit. Right, I'll not rabble on. Continue driving and have a safe one during the tornado. And I'll catch you later. Bye for now. Yeah, I'm doing 80 miles an hour, and everybody on the side of me is probably doing 90. You know, you ought to hear them passing. No, you have a safe journey home, and I hope to see a free miss again soon. Bye for now. Yeah, I'm sorry, Paul. There's no safe scenario from nuclear weapons. The only dumb thing about nuclear weapons, when they do, just do decide to go to nuclear war, the rest of us are so screwed. We well, yeah, I don't know what the... UK is saying because um, the news is like just I don't know go to Australia for ten pound I think is a new thing they'll give you, for ten pound you can go to Australia from in the UK so they must be doing like what we were doing for homes for Ukrainians well what happened to us is we'll be joining the collateral damage the five million Ukrainians that have to leave their country. Now yeah, we'll just be joining that group. I'll make it six million, eight million people. 
And depending on how many people die from radiation poisoning, cats, dogs, birds, fish, yeah, the whole planet will be upside down. Are you in England or in London? I'm in Northwest England, Burnley. Northwest England. Oh, okay. What do you guys see out there? You may take my wife and you may take my cattle, but you'll never take my freedom. I'm just finding that the UK's independent nuclear deterrent has existed for over 60 years to deter the most extreme threats to our national security and way of life, helping to guarantee our safety and that of our NATO allies. Well, what you should be selling is uh, radioactive detectors. What you do is you put a candle in a box, they open it up, they stick it outside the window, and as the candle catches on fire, yeah, that's a good sign it's hot. You know, that's going to bring up dating really, really tough. Does she have syphilis? Does she have gonorrhea? Does she have herpes? Does she have nuclear radiation? Yeah, dating is going to get a lot tougher. Oh, hell, does she have fingers? Oh, I'm lost now. I don't have a clue what you're on about. I can't find out about it on the official, but they're on Pro Rogue, aren't they, actually? The only thing I can find is from the 17th of February, it says the UK's nuclear deterrent risk, not, sorry, the, the attack of, the chance of a nuclear attack remains remote, he said. That was a month and two months ago, actually. And if you kiss her on the lips, will her lips stay on her face? Yeah, it's going to be very interesting. Oh, I think I found something new. 14th, or what day are we on? 14th of April, down from March, April. No, it's still fair old. It's the UK Deterrence and Assurance Academic Alliance. They want to create deterrence on topics such as assurance, cohesion, and conflict escalation. Well, I think we need to do like the Wild Wild West. We give Putin a gun, we give Nash, uh, Pelosi a gun, and let him shoot it out. Yeah, who's ever left standing is the winner. I think Pelosi would win. They don't call it the whip for nothing. Have you been keeping up with the Johnny Depp and Amber Heard case? Hello, everyone. This is W Guardian. If you care to listen to me, I can tell you a little bit about the nuclear explosions and their consequences and what you can do about them and uh, i just can tell you that not much you may be just lucky to survive the initial strike uh, but uh, you cannot do too much you can do something but not much yeah but um what about the chance of it happening what do you think that is a serious chance or not not likely chance because if it is definitely going to happen then we could all just i, I imagine a lot of people are literally going to leave the country now because of that you see it's not possible to uh, kind of estimate a chance or the chance in this case <laughs> Because it's not possible to understand the mentality of those people who make decisions in Russia currently. Russia has been uh, threatening the West with nuclear threats, with, nuclear, with the possibility of a nuclear strike for at least 15 years, perhaps more. And uh, it worked all the time. Whenever somebody from Russia, somebody important, of course, from Russia would say, remember, we have nuclear weapons, the West would say, okay, we are not going to press you, please don't use your nuclear weapons. But suddenly, under the influence of the war in Ukraine, people in the West began to understand that this may continue forever 
that if you don't stop, if the West does not stop Russia now, then Russia will continue pressing the West, threatening it with a nuclear strike. So there was a reply from the West. I don't remember who exactly said that, but it was clearly said that if Russia risks to use the so-called tactical nuclear weapon, that is a weapon of a small uh, capacity, typically with the uh, TNT equivalent between 1,000 and 5,000 tons, not kilotons. <coughs> no, no, 5,000, yes, no, not uh, megatons, not hundreds of kilotons, just uh, five to uh, one to five kilotons. Then there would be a response from the West. And uh, that response would include the bunkers where Putin may hide. After that, you know, they became a little bit more modest with their claims on the international level. While inside Russia, their propaganda continues to make their own people brave about the possibility of Russia to strike again the West and demolish it and burn it down completely. And they even say, they understand, of course, that there would be a reply, but they say, we will go to paradise and they will just die. So they have that rhetor rhetoric, or rhetoric, I'm not sure how to pronounce it correctly, and they seem to enjoy speaking about such things. As for the actual nuclear strike, it's a little bit complicated. It, it does not work as straightforward like crazy Putin decides to launch a nuclear bomb against the United Kingdom of the United States and presses the button and everything goes automatically. There are several people who are uh, who need to make that decision because you know there are there can be mistakes and moreover in that nuclear suitcase or briefcase which is carried around the presidents of the united states and uh, the russia and perhaps uh, the uh, general secretary of the communist party party of china uh, those nuclear briefcase uh, 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 briefcases uh, contain some transmission device which actually does not activate the nuclear bombs, does not launch rockets, etc. It only sends an order which then needs to be accomplished by other people. And there are also three other people or two other people maybe in the United States is different, in Russia three people need to confirm the order. So that it would be known that it was not because somebody went crazy, somebody made a mistake, there would be a whole procedure. And then when that order is received, it will be entered into the system, which then will transmit the order to the launch sites. It's about the strategic weapons. As for the tactical weapons, it's a little bit different, but still there is a procedure which, is, which uh, was worked out for the purpose uh, of preventing accidental, unintended use of nuclear weapons. And so that procedure is rather strict. So it's not going to happen uh, just accidentally, but as we can see, the leaders of the uh, of or of Russia may be inadequate, and maybe they by now they feel cornered, you know, and they may take actions, suicidal actions. I even saw a, a photograph from Russia recently, in which. 
it, you know, just a peaceful city of Russia, Moscow perhaps, maybe St. Petersburg, I'm not sure. And uh, there is a big, uh, how do you call it, uh, text on the wall, with perhaps a mural. Uh, we don't need the world if there is no Russia in it. So people are getting prepared. The propaganda is preparing the Russian people in, to die in a nuclear war. But if there is a nuclear, a global nuclear war, you know, it's known that the United States and Russia can destroy world, the world several times over. So perhaps five to ten times uh, all life on it. So it's not likely that anyone would be able to hide. You, you may hide in a deep uh, bomb shelter in principle, but there will be a time when you would have to uh, go out, come out of that bomb shelter. And what will you see then? The radioactive desert, lifeless, perhaps very cold because of the so-called radioactive, uh, uh, the post-nuclear winter, post-nuclear winter because of the, uh, because of a lot of dust which would be raised into the air and would cover the sky and, and block the sunlight. And because of the, the blocked sunlight, the earth would cool down and all the vegetation would die because it needs sunlight. So that that is a possibility, a small possibility, but a possibility. But if the strike is just, you know, just one or two strikes, then there is a possibility to survive. And it depends on where the strike will occur. Thank you for that information, Guardian. If there is, a, a, let's say, not a global, but a limited nuclear war, or just uh, one or two nuclear strikes on, from one side and uh, then from the other side, then uh, uh, most people will survive. I mean, most people on the planet, only those who will be directly affected uh, will die or will suffer from uh, after effects of that strike, of those strikes, perhaps. Uh, we had an experience on our planet. Two cities were demolished with nuclear weapons. In, they were in Japan. There were also nuclear tests. Uh, near Semipalatinsk in Kazakhstan, where people are still suffering from the consequences. There were also nuclear tests in some place in the United States, not too far from Las Vegas, as far as I remember. I even remember a photograph uh, from that time taken on the street in Las Vegas, where on the background there was the nuclear mushroom visible and it's not possible to determine how far away it was that mushroom appeared perhaps you know those mushrooms even though the explosion may occur at the altitude of just a few hundred meters or on the ground the mushroom eventually goes up to the altitude of 20 or more kilometers so perhaps it was quite far away, but still was visible in that old photograph. So, as we know, many people suffered, not even knowing what happened to them. Uh, but uh, the humankind as a whole survived. In Japan, where the strikes were directed right into the cities, Many people died immediately, many people died later, many people died of the uh, aftermath of the 
nuclear explosions. But again, those deaths were localized within those cities and their suburbs. Uh, they did not occur all around in Japan. So in the limited use of nuclear weapons, there will be lots of deaths, uh, but it will not be a global catastrophe. The UK's threat level is that substantial and it's been that way since the 9th of February. And it says on the MI5 website, substantial means an attack is likely. But this is talking about terrorism. Um, so I don't know if they class a nuclear attack as terrorism. You see, Russia may act indirectly. It, it is actually connected with all sorts of terrorists and uses them for achieving its political goals. And those goals are not really very nice, you know. So if your secret service says that an attack is likely, then it is likely, but it does not mean that it will happen. It may happen, of course, they are working on preventing attacks. Uh, but you need to be prepared, morally at least. You know, the purpose of such attacks is to scare the people. There can be victims, of course, but victims are just uh, an instrument, a tool for achieving a different result. That is, scaring people and making them uh, kind of angry at their governments and making people demand something from their governments which uh, those who start so those terrorist acts uh, want to achieve so they are of course and when it affects directly you or your family it's terrible it's terrible but uh, if, when it does not affect you, you need to remember that the main purpose of it is to make you scared and uh, to paralyze your ability to think reasonably, to act reasonably. So that is the purpose of terrorist attacks. And that's what we see here in Ukraine, just Half an hour, well, an hour ago, there was, there were two explosions in my city. I don't know uh, yet where. I only can tell you that it's about 10 kilometers, maybe eight kilometers, not too close to me. And I don't know what it was. Perhaps it was a cruise missile shot down by the Ukrainian anti-aircraft military, or perhaps that cruise missile fell down, or there were two of them perhaps, and they fell down somewhere and exploded. I don't know yet. But, you know, a lot of bombardment occurs against the civilian targets, like uh, residential buildings, schools, uh, universities, hospitals, even kindergartens. And uh, the purpose of such attacks is to scare people and to make them ask, beg perhaps their own government, their own president, to surrender, to uh, plea for peace from the invader. So that is the purpose. But, you know, initially it could work like that, uh, but it looks like my country, people of my country, passed that point of fear. And now they want, they, they don't want peace, they want a victory, they want a revenge for atrocities that were caused by the Russian army in Ukraine. What's going on, y'all? Hey, uh, hey there, you came over here. Mad Dog and Paul Griffiths. Morning, Frank. 
I'm a bit late, but morning, Frank. Morning, Paul. Morning, Paul. Morning, Bly. Morning. I'm putting together a special episode called um, How to Survive Nuclear Radiation. I think I know it's, it's actually just going to be called Nuclear War. So I'm just trying to get any sound bites. Probably quite a good thing to have. Is it going to be one of your pocket books? No, it's a, I'm trying to put together a video and it's just um, a video. Hopefully it might end up in a pocket book, depends on the algorithms. This one in particular is to do with um, the chance of it happening, the if it's already happened or not, report. We're going to try and do it like a chart if it's happened or, or, or a warning label and stuff like that. I think a pocketbook would be better because one of the things we're going to lose if anything like that happens would be communications. <clears throat> yeah, I was reading about that Satan rocket. Where I Massive tidal wave, radioactive tidal wave, would just drown us. Nice. I'm not sure if it was the rocket or whether it was a submarine. <clears throat> this causes a tidal wave, but either way, it sounded quite destructive. So has it gone off already, or has not happened yet? No, I, I, it's one of those things that the, the news sort of puts out, and I don't know if it's done to scare people or it's done by the Russians just to make us feel like we fear them. Maybe it's something they haven't even got. It's, it's just one of those things, but if it's real and exists, it sounds awful. It's you have to read the story, but I think I think it's a some sort of automated submarine. And it would, it could flood an area the size of Texas um, with a radioactive tidal wave. Uh, and it, they reckon that um, yeah, if it happened over here, obviously the UK would just be washed out and because it's a radioactive tidal wave. Um, it would make all the land radioactive, or destroy all the food source and everything else. Um, so yeah, it sounds quite awful. Yeah, it sounds really bad. The Posidon. Is that what it's called? Poseidon. I don't know. Look it up on Google. There's a news story. I think it was uh, one of the national newspapers that broke it. And I'm sure one of the Satan rockets, Satan 2, Satan 3 rockets was mentioned uh, at about a tidal wave to Sami. It's just, do we believe that they have this thing that can make that? Because every time I see a bomb go off, it's like a guy sat in a metal tub on, do you know what I mean, the tanks and stuff, they don't look next level. And everyone's seen a firework go off before. So that, but then it's like a holocaust denier if you say Higanashinama and Hiroshima, what is it, Nagasaki. But my ears have really popped, like, proper bad. Has anyone else's ears gone funny? Uh, oh, I can't say I've noticed that today. You want to get yourself a barometer. Get a nice barometer, hang it on your wall, and it'll, you'll notice if the pressure changes much where you are. You pick them up really cheap in a um, charity shop or something. I just keep Googling it, like, as, it, as a bomb gun off for all. But the government aren't even updating the website. Oh, have you got that RSOE? Uh, the Hungarian Disaster Information Service, RSOE, EDIS, on the Play Store, and also you've got it on, you know, a standard internet web page. Um, gives you all the disaster alerts happening around the world. Thank you. Yeah, I, well, I don't have anything that can give me a push notification, and, um, since Elon Musk has taken over Twitter, I've received a push notification almost every day. Not yet today. But, um, yeah, Elon Musk, like, sends me direct messages now. That's going to 
I'll be interested the way that goes. Uh, yeah, well, this is kind of really independent. This um, in the, uh, this warning system. It's where a lot of the media stuff get their uh, heads up on their stories from. Yeah, cool. Uh, well, uh, are you on Twitter? Have you had this glitch happen? Where well, it's not a glitch. It just seems like a change in policy. Where now you can get push notifications from people you don't follow. I uh, well, Sussex Downs is on Twitter. Uh, I've got so I've noticed anything particularly different. I've had a few more tweets come out, I must say, but uh, I've, I don't really play with it much. Well, I, yeah, I have it all. I have two accounts, and I'm always logged into the one that's logged out of that doesn't have any followers and doesn't follow anyone or anything. And um, never do I ever get a push notification unless it's a direct at at me. But now, since Elon Musk has took over, like I just get notifications from like Elon Musk every morning. Just some, some. I, did, I can't even remember thinking about what they are now. All I can remember is when I clicked on to see if I like clicked follow by accident on his page. It's just the craziest page ever. Have you seen it? And put, he's pushing that to the entire world, possibly every day. I'd say that's like a nuclear disaster in a way, like a digitally nuclear disaster. Uh, my ears have gone well bad. It's like the underwater. Oh. I don't know what caused it. I mean, I think blood pressure changes can can some have, sometimes have that effect. Just general air pressure changes. What's it like there today? Up your way, is it muggy? It's a bit of a weird one down here. By the time my sound bites have synced to my iCloud, I get worried that it's old news. Is it old news now, the nuclear threat? Well, I wouldn't have said so until it actually happens. Um, <laughs> it's current news, I'd say. Could happen. Yeah, but what about the conspiracy theories that say um, Nagasaki and Hiroshima never occurred? That was like a Hollywood production. So the way I come to see it now is like if it's not something that's immediately affecting you or around you, just, oh, don't worry about it. Just try and uh, improve and control the things around you and make them better. And then if everyone did that, and eventually it would reach the places which are in the disaster areas. It's good to be aware of the news and stuff that's going on, <clears throat> but if you can't physically improve it or do anything about it, then uh, it's just noise. But the bloke, I've just passed on the golf course at 8.30 in the morning. Who plays golf at 8.30 in the morning? We'd all have to resort to air conditioning, wouldn't we, if we had a nuclear fallout? Ah, uh, we'd be buggered, to be honest. Uh, air conditioning won't do much good. Got have massive air filtration systems. There was a nuclear bunker built for the members of parliament during the Cold War. And it was all hermetically sealed. Big air pumps with filters and everything else. And um, it was on standby. So if anything happened, uh, all the important people could hurry away and scurry away underground. And when it was uh, recently opened up and um, inspected, sort of thing, it was found that all the pumps and everything would have been uh, ineffective. All the seals were leaky um, due to the technology at the time. Uh, and that it's likely that everyone who would have been in it would be one of the first to die <laughs> because the the filtration system and the water pumps and everything else um, basically contaminated, would contaminate straight away. Um, yeah, so all those people thinking they were escaping it and hiding in this bunker, uh, they would have been one of the first to get it. If it happened, you just want to be in the furthest and the remotest place in the world possible. Or have a 
air defence, laser guided air defence. And is it true about there's no um, underwater tornadoes, or they're called torpedoes, defence? There must be a di underwater, they can't just go where they want, can they? When they? Well, they hadn't even made a threat actually, it was a Russian telly guy that said it. Yeah, so it's dangerous speculation, isn't it? I don't know how many subs we've got going around the UK now. We used to have a few, but now I think most of them are in dry dock. Our Trident missiles and everything. Another interesting fact for something like that is that wherever you are in the UK, the furthest you can be from the sea is 60 miles. Yeah, but Northern Ireland would, would probably 500 feet is that all it we're saying? We're saying 500 feet high. Oh, and it's radioactive, though, that's so bad. That's if we believe in that you can do that sort of technology. And that 1945 was a real one thing. You don't get the same sort of response to if you deny the Holocaust, if you da deny Nagasaki and Hiroshima. I'll have to see what happens. I mean, a lot of the sanctions that we've been put on them haven't even started to kick in yet. I've just heard on the news that the um, the oil sanctions and stuff are unlikely to start for at least another six months. So they're not really feeling the the effects of all the sanctions and, and everything else. Once that starts kicking in and the Russian people start questioning why they can't get stuff and why they're having shortages, then it might start to turn around. Because of the radiation is, imagine if we could find a counter radiation to make it, because it's the protons fire out, and the electrons leave the proton, as the nucleus, and they fire out, but if there was another place where they could fire into, because that's why they radiate objects around them, but if you put some there, I bet there's something, I bet radiation cancels out radiation. Um, a bacteria or something that assumes radiation. Uh, um, one of the power plants that's leaking Chernobyl or something. Yeah, but there's something like a magnet, a magnet that just sucks it in. You get yourself a radiation suit and a Geiger counter. Like saying that uh, he's picking up high levels of radiation just going into um, Iceland. Because some of the fish was radioactive. I don't know how true that was, because he was quite paranoid. But, um, yeah. Get yourself a little pocket Geiger, Geiger counter. I think you might be surprised how much radiation there is all around us. Should we do a tinfoil hat Monday? Or not, just for the hell of it. I know tinfoil hats do have a history to do with radiation and being helping. But is there a real risk that we should mandate it? I think it would be strange, but we could do it in the same way where the, the mass did it mass and if it helps, but is it enough? It makes you feel better, it can't hurt. But you got you know, you just gotta think that food, contamination, water, uh, air. It's, it, it'd be everywhere. It's, uh, there's not a lot you can do to sort of defend against it unless you've got a full blown suit, ways of treating. Uh, what did they say? Iodine solution or something? That would be the cutting. I have to do a cutting. I'm going to try and. I had to uninstall GarageBand. I've had a lot of trouble actually recently with my. Everything. The amount of time it takes to sync stuff um, and stuff like that is really mission. My electricity cost is always dot on the same every day except for when it rolls. Like that's how consistent it is. It's always like one pound ninety eight in the cost of electric for the day. If I'm I'm proper considering running my iMac, um, 
and I know that I'll add at least like 50 pence on, maybe even, well, maybe not 50 pence. Actually, I might just run my iMac 24-7 also. Because that's with laptop running 24-7, phone always charged, loads of lights, um, PC, all sorts of stuff. 24-7. Okay, if I have my iMac on 24-7, and I want to do a flipping Zells again, like indexing all Zello conversations, and then try to find instead of pocket books of it, it'd be good to like search for a subject and then just find all the time someone spoke about it in the index and make an episode. Every time a new event comes out, use all the historic things that people have said and make a documentary about all different subjects. That's what I want to do. Have you ever used Zello Hex? I'm thinking about just doing it in... It's just such a mission. I have to index everything completely differently. I have to somehow be able to click on the, what they said and get to the audio. And the only way I can think of doing it is Zello Hex. Somehow. Using Zello Hex. Because they still provide that on the Zello website. I've got the program. Well, it's a command line. It's a, you got to install this thing from the website. Zello H E X Hex, and um, you can then get the original audios in file format, like just to open into an audio player, and somehow like index it automatically, have it running, so it transcribes it. So then if I search for what people have said, I can get to the audio from it somehow. I can't figure out how to make it do it. Some things that some people don't talk about much, like Tesseract. Hardly anyone has spoke about Tesseract. No one has been transcribed yet saying Tesseractal. And I've said that loads of times. Why have every, has it worked? Oh, there's no transcriber now on here. Not kicked out. I'm trying to think now of a sensible way to use Tetheractyl in a sentence and get that as a result. Tetheractyl pyramids into line. You want it in the middle of it as well. Which produces Tetheractyl. So inverse lines of symmetry. To antimatter liquidity. See, it's something to do with liquid, I think. It's, apparently, it's true. An example of tetheractal manifestations could include um, probably black holes and things like that. What do you reckon? How normal are tetheracts? Anyone got any information on tetheracts? Tetheractal information, anybody got any of that down in their thoughts? Tetheractal information, tetheracts, tetheracts, geometric tetheracts. Do you believe in tetheracts, tetheracts? Have you ever encountered a tetheract? Do you have any knowledge of this wonder. Tetheracts can take main, many forms and to our eye, whether we have encountered one or not, we, we can try and get a gist of it by vocalizing what we know so far about tetheracts. Tetheracts are, they got this, the, the right, a, a, a cubal, a cubic, a square tetheract would be like it have six sides, and then it would have inside it another six-sided geometric face, and all six sides of the adjoining walls to them two cubes inside each other also the same length. So everything inside it is a square, and it produces 
a geometric shape that's able to be inside out and outside in and also probably represent itself to us as a well probably a wonder we would probably never be able to experience what's actually happening I think and it's probably very present in black holes and stuff like that but also probably much more present in everything because all the world is made of all the everything is made of little tiny geometric shapes and make bigger ones when they go ge geometric with each other so what it means about tesseractal things is incredible when you think about it think about if you dig in the big hole in the ground we believe the rock is millions of feet deep or whatever but actually like tesseracts teach us that the form can be at the surface and everything inside it could have tesseracted There's no waste i don't think in a tesseract thing gravity is caused by heaven spending heaven Omega Kronas, the little shapes that when they pile on top of each other, the other ones go into them like slots. And it's, it makes um, gravity. So that's what I know about this. And if you know anything more, then please. Does anybody out there believe what we are told about the Tesseract? Trust the information about this convex regular type 4 polytope made of eight cubes made of eight cubes one made of they say they're made of eight cells so imagine a tesseract when i'm saying a cube inside a cube with little cubes connecting the cubes they call it a four cube so they're saying it's not got a middle so you can imagine it like a donut in that way but um oh all of them ones that go inverse out let's try and find a better one than this let's vote let's find out more about this is a octachronon octahedroid cubic prism tetracube so it's type 4 polytope let's look at different convex regular type 4 polytopes all of them are the ones that overlap. Um, do you know when you like draw and paint and you just like go in zigzags and all over each itself, then colour it in, then it look like that after a bit. But oh, there's some tetrahedral envelope or cubic envelope envelopes. What's my envelopes? Cell centered, cell vertex centered. Wire frame circles. Yep, this is where we don't have a clue. Anyone no. Anyone got any information on um polydodecahedrons? Hello Paul, nice to hear you back. Not heard you for a long time. Where you been hiding? I I was thought I was being a downer on the channel so I left for a bit. All right, no, you've never been a downer. Yeah. I haven't got a clue what you're talking about right now, though. Are oh, you talking about polytunnels that you see in fields for uh, protecting crops? No, but they could be a solution. I'm worrying about um, tesseracts. Have you ever heard about a tesseract? I see. I know a lot about a tesseract, and I've looked into tesseracts and. Um, I was just saying I would try and find anyone who believes in tesseracts or knows about tesseracts. Geometric shapes. Never heard of one, to tell you the truth. All right, well, a tesseract is a, a recognised, I think, by top people as an authentic thing in reality. Um. And they're one of the most popular of many different types of convex regular four polytopes. And I'm just looking into other polytopes. You're going to buy one? No, I don't think you can buy them. Um, 
they're just like real and proper confusing though but there could be a solution to something don't have a clue why I'm researching it oh my god what time is it 10 or 9 yeah but you'll be knowledgeable about it next time somebody asks a question you might be on a quiz somewhere and somebody will ask a question and you'll know where it is and nobody else will have a clue and they'll think blimey he must be brainy yeah it's just about knowing that you know in when you know guitar chords like what someone might be like what's a great stellated dodecahedron and what's a i call sahedron you've got to just learn what the thing is above it to then be able to figure out what that is without even knowing it you know like there's a format to figure it augmentations right right you are <laughs> i'm not musical at all so i wouldn't know <coughs> trying to get some tea down me so i can wake up a bit and start the day afresh much rain up there first time it's rained in here for ages when i've opened the door Everything was going dry, all the plants and stuff and grass was drying out, but looks like I've had a shower of rain last night and should freshen everything up, wash all the bird shit off the path. Not much rain, I think there might be a bit, but not much. Notice my gas and electric bill has gone twice as much as normal. I don't know if you have. I mean, I think the bill was sent to me by email yesterday. Bloody hell. That has actually doubled. Yeah, I don't even use gas now because it's gone up so much. Well, electric, you know, the standing daily charge, that's gone up to 40 pence a day. It used to always be around 25, 26 pence a day. 40 pence a day now just to have the electric, actually just to have the meter in the house. And then in October, it's going to start going up again, another double. I don't know what we're going to do. Got wiring it up to the lamppost outside. Middle of the night, sneaking around, burying wire. You can bet people are now thinking of fiddling the meters, you know, bypassing them how they do. The, the electric boards ain't for to that. There'll be a lot of that going off, fiddling meters, because they don't come and check them now, do they? Where before they used to come about every three months and, and do a meter reading, they don't do that anymore. So it'd be a lot easier for people to do that. Well, God knows what's going to happen. Well, we're going to end up having to decide whether we have some food or, it, or we keep the place warm and lit, don't we? I think. You know, these big energy companies are making lots and lots of money for their people. Well, that money should be going to keep the pricings down, I think keep the prices at a reasonable standard for for most people for the populace not going into rich people's pockets who are already rich in the first place you know they've got that much money in the bank some of these people they will never use it in their lifetimes and they couldn't possibly oh my lord have you ever heard of demi cubes demi cubes are they're in the five dimensional geometry and they're DM, DM penetract or a five demi cube is a semi regular five polytope constructed from five hyper cubes with alternated vertices removed. Well, it's all too complicated for me. Demi means half, doesn't it? So, what's an half cube? I'm just wondering if we can eat radiation imagine that if radiation could be like a food like the opposite <laughs> it's a poison isn't it a deadly poison i wonder if anything can live on ready don't it don't certain insects can survive radiation they do say that if the end of the world come we'll all go most things will go but there will be insects and stuff that will survive and start again to dominate the earth 
Yeah, well, imagine if you could make a food bomb, like in that, when you've seen a mushroom shape, imagine if you could harvest a mushroom, and you'd have to harvest the mushroom really fast, distribute it and eat it fast before it moulds, otherwise you end up with radiation a bit, like a type a bit. Yeah, be all right. You know when you see these uh, atom bombs go off, if there was a, a counter weapon that would throw like a big plastic sheet over that mushroom and capture it so it don't spread. Yeah, capture it, keep it in its shape, harvest it, eat it. No. Yeah capture it in a big giant plastic bag and take it back to the person to the country that sent the bomb over in the first place and release it let them have a bit of their own medicine no but i'm talking about a hypothetical new thing that we could imagine that if you could just explore the giant mushroom into the put it an actual mushroom or a broccoli if you figured out a bomb not, not a bomb, you press a button, device sort of explodes, it's got a little seed in it, bang, giant, enormous broccoli just appears. It, world hunger would be over. Depends if you like broccoli or not. <laughs> I know mushrooms don't have a lot of energy value in, do they? Uh, I was watching a Bear Grylls thing once, and he says he wouldn't even bother, you know, picking one up because it. You, you expand more energy picking the mushroom up to eat than, than the energy value in it. They're so low. On well, uh, giant, it'd be easy. that's what I mean. At start, you'll be doing like giant broccoli, giant ban bananas, giant strawberries. You know what I mean? Stuff like that. But then um, you refine it down and you try and do it to finished products. Maybe if every petal is a can of cork or something like that. a tree that explodes, grows in a millisecond into a ginormous tree with millions of branches and every branch has hundreds of Coca-Cola cans on it. Imagine how incredible that would be for, a, for us. It would be good if they could find a way to accelerate growth in plants. You know, rather than, you know, some things take six months to start from seed to eating. If they could do it, get it down to a week or a month for a crop to uh, come to a fruition where it, they can be sold for people. I think that would solve the hunger problem of the world, wouldn't it? Making, making, making plants, crops just grow so much quicker than what they do at the moment you know plant a field of potatoes and in a week's time you, you you're uh, digging them up to sell on the market that'd be great someone will just crack it one day they'll crack the code and they'll go oh, look we can do it we can actually write onto exact portions of space and change the um atomic structures and stuff and just make teleportation and randomly generating like you know what i mean got a button on your phone that makes a lamborghini appear in front of you and everyone has that and a million different cars that you can choose from or a nice ice cream i want ice cream or the ice cream generation button just turns the space into it or turn back time up I don't want to get hit by a car I'll go back in time like just a few moments for a cost maybe if it costs a lot a lot of things reading minds invisibility button someone will figure it out teleportation machines we wouldn't need cars then would we we'd have like boxes in the street like telephone boxes you go in and you dial the destination where you want to be you put in the postcode to where you want to be put your pound in and it zips you off there you disappear out that phone box and end up in a phone box somewhere in in the postcode what you put in now yeah, that would sort out the fuel problem we won't need cars and buses 
they could all go. We just have thousands of these boxes everywhere. Teleportation boxes. As long as a fly don't get in, we hear you're all right. Again, lots of people walking about with uh, flies' heads. I'm wondering, think, oh, you know what happened there? In fact, you could make a thing up with that, where everybody goes into these teleporting machines and they'll be taking animals and stuff in with them so that they can be made off animal when they come out. You know, everybody takes the Rottweiler in so they have a tough looking face when they come out. Yeah, you've got to break the fabric of reality. Yeah. Problem is, that's an odd thing to break. The, but the scientists might find out how to do that one day. Break it. And we all might benefit. Or oh, it might go wrong. Might be the destruction of the world. Might be the end of the world when, when they find out how to do that. Everybody be going crazy with different ideas. We come off lying. People aren't going to use it. I'm not going to opt into the. I'm going to have a bulldog face. That's not going to be a good use of stuff. Hardly anyone will. One, one or two people mind, but it won't be a big seller. That that halt the production of like teleportation machines. They'd be like, oh no, have you heard about this new um, hybrid animal machine? Peter's pitching. It's um people are worrying about travelling with animals now because they don't want to come out as a hybrid. Hardly anyone will want... If the machine came out, I said, do you love your pet? Well, why not swap your face with his? Check out the new machine brought to you by Peter. That's right. Do you want to have a look like a Rottweiler? Well, come over here. For just £10,000, you will look like a Rottweiler. Also, I'll change it round and make them look like a poodle. Put human faces on dogs. And would the dog be the human? And the human with the dog's face would actually be the dog. I think I need an holiday. Have you ever heard of conformal supergravity? In a word, no. <laughs> supergravity. Blimey. Is that when you get drunk and you keep falling over and you keep blaming it on the gravity? No, it's a, it's a study of, of gravity. A supersymmetrized version of the study. Super gravity, it's a physics theory, but um, I believe in that. No, I've not heard of that. I mean, it's like when they say we ought to go to different planets to carry on civilization. The problem with that is we've developed for this planet exactly to the planet size and gravity uh, power. So if we move to another planet that's not exactly the same size as this planet, we're not going to adapt too well at first. The gravity will not be enough or it'll be too heavy for us. And it will change, it'll change us, change our bone and muscle structure to cope with that. Yeah, nowhere in the universe would they have ever sent out if we are the only life forms that are intelligent like why would they have ever put all the energy to send even just a small satellite to leave the solar system and if we have done that that satellite could go all the way around the universe be the only thing that's not obeying the big bang's direction and be the death of the earth because it could come back and hit us could do could come back hell of a lot bigger starts gathering dust and stuff you know, it, it, this satellite in itself starts becoming like a, a gravity collector of particles. Comes back quarter of the size of the Earth and bang. 
gathers speed through going near other planets and getting a push. Call it a toe in it. Yeah. It could all happen. It's like if we went and lived on the moon, we'd all be weaklings, wouldn't we, after a bit? Because we wouldn't, we, our muscles would go weaker because we wouldn't need, you know, we, we, we won't need to be bouncing about when we walk. So our muscles would change to being a lot weaker for the weaker gravity on the moon. So we'd all end up being like little weak things that can't pick anything up. That's if you believe in the moon. Well, I see it up there every night. Shining away. Well, it don't shine, does it? It's just a reflection from the sun. It reflects down. You're still, in effect, looking at the light from the sun, not the moon. When you look at the uh, moon, you're looking at a reflection of the sun, aren't you? Yeah, but some people say that it's not real, that the moon's not actually out there. Well, so it must be out there to shine. What is it? Somebody wear a giant searchlight? No, <laughs> can't be that. Cause it's been there for millions of years, isn't it? Ooh, so they say. I mean, I've not been here for millions of years, so I can't prove that. Yeah, but it's inside us. That's what they say. It's a local thing. Like, um sort of like an underlying operating system inside us that's like the logo of something not just a logo it's a understanding it's like a so if even when you see a photograph of it you still see it because it's there but it's not actually it's like inside us or something um like an atom in our eye imagine if it's a loading screen in the sky and they wanted to use it least amount of energy they reduced the amount of like quality we could define with our eyes so i'd fog in that to make it render faster and um yeah so nasa could have easily faked the moon landing people would have believed it and that could have further spurred on the spherical fear fearism But um, also it could just be a, like a build-up of a certain gas every night or something like that. But it seems weird that it's just a big circle thing in the sky, like a normal. You know I mean, every day and everyone's just not even saying all about it. NASA could have easily have faked it in a studio, like you say. We've seen enough films that convinces us that they're on different planets, haven't we? You know, and it'd be a lot cheaper, easier, and safer for the for Hollywood to uh, made it look like there was on the moon when there wasn't. Be a hell of a lot easier because there was no star sparkling, was there? In the moon landings you didn't see any stars it was just blackness out there and i don't know if they've actually fully explained that more believable that people have only gone as far as the uh, international space station because that's just a fraction of the distance to the moon isn't it that's just that just sits just outside the atmosphere is it just in space, just high enough. So it's more believable that people have only gotten that far, actually, than supposedly gone, was it, 250,000 miles into space. In the 1970s, when technology was, you know, not much more than this basic wooden table was the technology in them days. And yet they're, they're trying to claim that, you know, all these missions went so smooth. And they had no technology. Computer was, you know, computers were just in their infancy. Calculators, really. Well, there's people claiming that portals have appeared in the Alps. Well, I won't mind going through one. See where it comes out. Where wormholes that take you to a different 
time in history trouble is going back in time you've got to be ever so careful haven't you because you make the slightest change there and it affects the future so so different doesn't it you go back there and you accidentally poison someone or kill someone you could knock a family generation out over here couldn't you they suddenly disappear you'd be tempted to go back to battles and go and see them and say don't make that mistake this is what you should have done <laughs> and the people the whole of history just changes well all the other alternative timelines the more further back you would go in them the more likely that langoliers have already consumed them and you think being on a vegetarian diet might be bad or I think being a vegan is a hard work but imagine being a langolier did they eat then? have you not seen the film? langoliers eat um, alternative realities, timelines and the past they're like these black smoke things that if you're ever on an airplane that accidentally goes through a time portal you might end up in the past so that they're, they're not just vegan like they won't even eat things in the present they'll only eat the past that's why i can't time travel because the langoliers are so good that they want to eat but they'll eat everything they eat the past all right what are they like 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 cockroaches or something no, like black clouds clouds of blackness fly around i'm not seeing any of them then there's none of them in loughborough we still live in the past somebody asked where humanity started from was that a question somebody asked yesterday i'm sure they did where did the first humans start from well i've checked it out And, you, and, and they did this year, DNA DNA testing going back 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 to the most primitive of uh, human DNA and it's from the savannah in Africa that's where we started because conditions were just right there always up and sticky and that's where conditions were right for uh, humans to grow and don't need clothes and stuff to keep warm i think you some more information on langoliers in the pictures let me take a look we don't want too many of these lang langoliers uh, knocking about then holy lord i've just found the film and the original film is three hours long it's on youtube a bit like a mini series then so i don't think i've ever watched a film that long an hour's long enough to sit watching a a film so it'd be like be you know you sit and watch an hour have a rest and watch another hour i think you a link to the one i'm watching if you want to watch it in sync a link let's have a look 